Hello and welcome to Fairway Media's coverage of the 2020 Goondocks Open held at Timber Park in Estacada, Oregon. This is Chandler Fry and I'm joined by birthday boy Cole Redolin and uh, we're going to have some fun watching some great players play today. How are you doing today, Cole? I'm doing good. Um... I'm excited to watch this because awesome. it's only it's only it's only my second time on film, so we'll see if I can do any better. But <laughs> yep, very cool. I'm excited to watch. Yeah, there you saw Dan Daniel the TD. So round one feature card, we have Brody Cannon and Cole Verdalen playing with Chandler Fry, myself, and Nate Sexton, otherwise known as Team Sexy Channel. And uh, hole one, we're teeing off from uh, baseball field <laughs> the footing's a little rough it's pretty open we have some op on the right side and we're throwing to a basket located behind some hay bales what are you throwing on this hole cole i'm throwing a yellow force pretty flat top so it's not as stable as some other forces but okay definitely it holds yeah there's not much danger on this hole except for the the cars on the right side if you flip the disc over too much you can find some danger I'm going with uh, a vulture. I had, I don't know, this was the first tournament I'd played in a while, and I was kind of nervous. Yeah. And I th threw it way low. <laughs> Never had a chance. Ugh. But uh, luckily, in doubles, there's two people playing on your team, so if, you, if the first person throws a bad shot, there's a fairly good chance the second person's going to throw a better one, especially when that person is Nathan Sexton. So let's see what he's doing. I think he's going with a, I, I, I kind of forget, probably a destroyer. Yeah, I know he has like a blue destroyer and X cal so it's kind of hard to yeah. tell, but. That flight path definitely looked like a destroyer, so none yeah. of us are really in putting range. Uh, you're the closest on the right side, close to the OB. Nathan and I definitely have a tough uh, upshot because I think we're both going for in between the hay bales, the shortest path to the basket. Nate's going with his star rat. Oh, I was kind of hoping for a skip there. <laughs> oh, I, I wanted to make this one. And I still might make it. <laughs> oh, come oh. on. <laughs> Why did that not stick? I guess left side. Could you guys see the basket from there? We could. We we had a barely little bit of a view on the right side, but not okay. a lot. You had to cut the hay bales really tight. On this. Yeah, either way, a really, a really tough putt. Not many people are making that one. You gave it a good bid. So did Brody. Both of us getting threes on this hole. I, I don't think there are any, but there's maybe one, two, the entire tournament in the first round on this hole. It's open, but it's kind of hard. Yeah, those hay bales really come into play, especially on the putting green, because just getting one far enough down there to give you a look is, is hard enough. For sure. Hole two is a, is a fun little hole. It's not very long. You just have to navigate through a pretty immediate tunnel of trees, and then it gets pretty open, and then the basket is located 330 feet, pretty straight, but slightly right. You're gonna see most players go with either a backhand turnover or a sidearm like you did, but you unfortunately uh, connected with a tree. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing there. That was <laughs> terrible. Yeah. So Nate looks to correct off yeah, your throw a little bit. That's looking pretty good. That's great. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. If uh, Mr. Sexton has a firebird in his hand, there's a pretty good chance that shot is going to be parked. And if I have a vulture in my hand, there's a decent chance I'm going to have a putt. <laughs> Ooh. All right, Looks like so he did catch a little bit of metal. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. I wasn't sure until I saw that. that yeah, OK. Kind of an unfortunate skip, honestly, off that off that bounce, but that's fine. I got to ask you, Cole, when you're playing with a player of um, 
importance, I guess I'd say, uh, just like a kind of a legendary player like Nate Sexton, is there any nerves that come along with it, like more than just a normal uh, tournament round? Absolutely. It is. It was honestly freaky walking up to the whole one. Like, <laughs> I've never, like, I played with you at Fort Silicon Open, but Nate was just on a whole nother level, and I was totally freaked Absolutely. out. But yeah. It was definitely, as the round went on, it was easier to stay in calm and collected. So, yeah. I think Nate's one of those players. Like, he's a 2017 USATC champion. Uh, he's won so many big tournaments, like Ledgestone Open and um, Las Vegas and, Can and Canadian Championships. But, like, at first, you're kind of terrified to play with him, but then, like, after a few holes, you realize how nice of a guy he is, you know, and how much of a Absolutely. sportsman he is. Yeah. And uh, it just gets kind of easy, you know. That's why I enjoy uh, – yeah. I'm lucky enough to be with him a lot. I live with him. And uh, just being able to play practice rounds with him is a treat, honestly. So. What's the play off this hole, Cole? Is that it? I like, I like to throw some of it. Yeah. I'd say that's probably a little high, though. I'm going to want, okay. if, if I'm throwing this, I'm wanting a little lower to flip up a little better to penetrate. Okay. It's, a, it's a tough shot because you want to get as tight as possible to that um, OB and uh, that Mando tree you can see right there with the yellow arrow. But you, if you hit that, you're risking going out of bounds right, which you can see on the right side past the fence, or uh, hitting the tree and going left and missing the Mando. That looks great. Yeah, so I really I really like what Nate did there. However, I'm still trying to go a little bit lower. I'm not entirely sure how high mine was, okay. but we'll, I guess we'll find out. Ooh, good angle. That looks nice. Birdie Cannon is aptly named. Um, he does have a cannon of an arm, that's for sure. That's a, that's a putt. That's a great looking shot. Like right Speaking of cannons for arms, let's see what you can do here. Ooh, nice oh my gosh. Keep wow. Forward energy. Forward energy going backwards. <laughs> if that does have the forward oh, yeah. energy like Nate that talked about, that's nice. our kind of tree. Yeah. That was decent. It's like we're going from Brody's lie right here. Yeah, this, is... yeah, this wasn't too bad. Oh, nice try. Not a gimme, that's for sure. Oh, a little high. Good effort, though. Good effort. I'm not sure whose drive that was. I think it was Nate's, but that is a good pickup. That's a good birdie. Oh, that was my drive. <laughs> there we go. And I got to give a shout out to Brody Cannon. He's been playing a long time. I remember him like 10 plus years ago playing uh, at tournaments that I was at in Oregon and uh, Washington. So it's cool to see him. He's kind of taking a break from disc golf a little bit, but it's good to see him back out there playing tournaments. Well, that was a bad shot. Yeah, he and I play together all the time. So nice. We, uh, we got connected and he asked me to play this with him. So it was good. Very cool. You guys make a pretty potent team, that's for sure. Once again, Firebird is in his hand. And actually, that's Circle's Edge, probably, right? Yeah, it's probably like 25 to 33 feet. Yeah, right around that edge area. I think I'm going with the Vulture here as well. Oh, no. Got a little unlucky there. Got the hands on the hips, walking away in disgust. <laughs> yeah, that was a little high. Let's see if Brody can get slower. Yeah, I think I was actually throwing a... Was I throwing a vulture here or a buzz? I can't remember. Oh, no, I think you threw a buzz, actually. Yeah. Pardon me. But I think the vulture would be my second choice on this one, that's for sure. Kind of a tester nice play. Card. You can... You can tell these baskets are, they've been there for a while. I think they're, are they Mach 2s or something like that? I think I think these are Mach 3s is what okay. I've heard. 
but they're pretty infam infamous for spit outs and uh, unlucky uh, breaks. So I'm not I'm not entirely sure if we're gonna see any this round, but likely. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, it looks like I left my putt just a little bit low, not quite committed, but good nice. comeback from Brody. That was clutch. Good commitment on that putt. Nice dead center. Yeah, if you're off the pole on these putts, on these baskets, um, there's a fairly good chance you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> this is a fun hole, 287 feet, par three. Um, it's just a lot of trees that you got to miss, which I did not do. The basket is located down that little gap in the middle and then slightly to the right. It calls for like a mid-range turnover shot, or as you're going to see here, a sidearm. Um, I think it might be a Cayman. I'm not entirely sure on that. But uh, this is one of the holes that Nate and I just didn't really know exactly how to play. Yeah, this is really tricky. I think I think the forehand is good to play, but the Cayman seems a little bit stable. Yeah. I think he could have thrown his Firebird on, uh, his like stable Firebird on a little Anheuser, and that probably would have been fine. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, Brody and I, yeah, Brody and I played uh, practice rounds together, of course, and we both opted for the buzz shot, just kind of straight at it, let it bend right. So sure. that's what we're trying to do here. I think that's the probably probably the most common play for uh, most disc golfers on this hole. Oh, unfortunate kick, but you still have a putt from Brody's, I believe. Yeah. Um, that was neat. And this basket is actually wide open for us. We both just uh, couldn't get it in. Oh, I don't know who that first one was. Was that? Oh, I guess that wasn't Nate putting first. Here's Nate. Yeah. Ooh. That's not going to stick on these baskets. Maybe a Mach 10 or like a disc catcher or something, but yeah. not on these. This is kind of a hole that you want to get. And losing a stroke this early on the round to you guys, Nate and I were definitely like feeling it. You know, you are you guys are already bringing the pressure. <laughs> What's the play on this hole, Cole? What are we, what are we supposed to do? I forget. <laughs> so it's the dis it, depending on how far you can throw it's either probably like a, a for Nate I'd think like a Firebird just flat and let it hyzer left naturally um, but I think I'm going with a blue Raptor here just trying to okay hyzer it straight in so yeah just like a stable fairway driver that you can put out to the right and just have it hyzer pretty fast left and it's kind of, it's not, I wouldn't call it yeah. a poke and hope, but there's, there's a definite gap you want to hit, but it's hard to see from the tee pad. Yeah, there's like one big tree right in the middle of the gap, and you kind of want to go just left of it, or just in front of it, or just behind it, so. Yeah. One of the, the funnest aspects of doubles for me is talking strategy. Just seeing what, what I should do, what Nate's doing, and uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I called it. But especially playing with Nate, he has such an incredible approach to the game. Like his mental game is so strong, and he just he understands what what, he, what we have to do, what what, uh, what is necessary, and uh, he executes, and uh, he he makes shots happen. You know that's why he's such a successful disc golfer because he knows what to do. <laughs> like this. Yeah. That was actually oh, a great ace run, I think. All right. Ooh. I had to run that one off. <laughs> oh, big guys fall hard. Got about a 20 footer for your birdie. Nice, nice, nice putt. There we go. Birdies all around. <laughs>
At hole seven, 265 feet. Another, I think they're all par threes, correct? Or is there one par four? I can't remember. Um, it's a pretty straightforward I shot. Think... You can really do whatever you want. But oh yeah, hole four, hole 17, right? Uh, I don't think it's... I think it's hole 20. Oh yeah, yeah there's not 18 holes. <laughs> it's like towards... Yeah, no, it's like towards the end, I think. Okay. <laughs> So you can do, kind of do whatever you want on this hole. The basket's straightforward. Um, you can throw a, what I'm doing is just a backhand buzz right at the bucket slash tree. That was a pretty decent kick. Nate is actually going with his R Pro dart. One of the few professional disc golfers who throws the dart, but he throws it well. It's crazy good with it. Yeah. Yeah. He also has that long spin putt that he busts the dart out on, which is always impressive. Yeah, no, I, I love the I love the play with the soft putter. It really hits into the green soft and doesn't risk any big skip. So, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so. Once again, birdie, birdie. It's probably like 28, <laughs> This is a tough hole. I always, in tournament play, have troubles on this hole because it's just scary for some reason. It's not that long. It's 305 feet, but we have OB on the right side, which is there's a staked off fence. And if you hit that hill right there, just like Brody did, there's a very good chance that you can roll out of bounds. So it's always a little scary. Yeah, that's pretty much, that's really ideal for what Brody just did. That's not an easy shot. So I'm just going to try to replicate that, but definitely a little <laughs> early and too much hyzer, sure. We're definitely playing it pretty safe there. I think I'm going back to my buzz once again. It looks a little wide. Yeah. Ooh, kind of unfortunate roll, but I did throw it too far anyway, so okay. it's a putt. I feel like yeah, when you got what up, Brody sorry, go lucked ahead. out of. Yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say you. Yeah, you got what Brody lucked out of because Brody yeah. should have gotten that too. Agreed. I feel like whenever Nate lines up, it looks like he's about to throw a sidearm. <laughs> I don't know if it's his <laughs> angle to the tee pad or his what his body's doing, but I'm always like, what are you doing, dude? This is definitely not a gimme. This is circle's edge, like 30-ish feet. Really nice. There we go. That looks pretty solid. I'll take that. Yeah, that's solid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your putt seems to be really good for these baskets. It's it's nice, flat, direct, straight. Like that's really solid. Yeah, I've also had plenty of rounds with these baskets where it's not a great putt though. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. give a shout out to your mom there, Karen. She's always there supporting you, uh, taking videos and pictures and everything. It's pretty cool to see that. <laughs> Is this hole actually three hundred five feet? It feels much longer, like at least 350, but. Yeah, it's a it's a blind shot. I feel like it's 350, but I mean, it might play as 305. Uh, it might play as longer than 305, but. You don't really know how good your shot is until you get over that um, house and t t closer to the basket. But what we want to do is throw a flex backhand if you're right-handed, kind of what Brody's doing. Um, but a yeah, Brody was so close to being so good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm throwing my overstable uh, Z Force right now, hoping to put a little Anheuser on it, pop it up, and finish left. You see, I put a lot of put a move on that one for sure. Brody says I'm going to be on the right. <laughs> Nate's thinking about going low forehand, which I actually kind of like. 
Nate's uh, going with the Thunderbird, the Jeremy Colling Tour Series Thunderbird. Yeah. That looks pretty solid. I think that's on Circle's Edge. Yeah, it's kind of tricky to see where the basket is from there, but it looks pretty good. Here's me from about. 80. Ooh, a good run. Brody has the green light to just run it. Let's see what he can do here. Oh, that was a great effort. That was great. Yeah, but both of us wanted that so bad. <laughs> For sure. Here's our birdie putt. Nice job. There we go. Nice the putt is feeling good. <laughs> I feel like in doubles tournaments, whenever I play them, um, my main contribution is usually the putting, because usually the person I'm playing with is a better thrower. <laughs> This is kind of a fun hole, only 300 feet, but uh, we got a double mando, as you can see, the wire to the left and the pole to the right. Kind of makes you think about more than uh, you, you want to on this hole. <laughs> you just want to get to the basket, but you got to think about other things first, I guess. Yeah, look, this mando is special for the event. It's not usually there, but I definitely yeah. like it. It adds a lot more challenge to the shot. For sure. I think the mistake that it's going to cause is uh, going too far left and right because we're focusing too much on hitting that that gap, which is pretty simple. Like it's a normal throw. It doesn't really change the shot at all. But as you can see, we're all kind yeah. of putting too much emphasis on the first 50 feet or first 100 feet and not the last 200 feet. So let's see what you what are you throwing here? I'm going with the ESP buzz. Brody and I are doing a lot of similar things on every hole. Nice. Um, we both go with the buzz here, just trying to go straight at it, nice. reduce the amount of skippage. For sure. That's decent. That's, I think, CTP, even though it's uh, kind of far away. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Still like to be a, lot, a little bit closer, especially on this hole, but yeah, it, it's doable. Ugh. That was a lack of commitment. <laughs> it's very possible. <laughs> that was just lack of commitment. Um, after you make so many like forty footers, you know, you, you just gotta, you just gotta give Nate one, you know. Yep. Give him a chance to, to get a birdie putt. There we go. That's a good. That's a sign of a good team. A uh, teammate picked up my disc as well as his. That's nice. One thing I'm impressed with with your putt, Cole, is the power you get uh, on your standstills. Like, even your putts from 25, 20 feet, it's kind of like this one. Like, the power yeah. is legit. And that's a hard thing to get for a lot of players. Like, a, lot of, a lot of younger players have that wobble, you know? And yours is just a laser. When I grow up, I want to putt like you, Cole. Please stay tuned for part two. Um, thanks for joining us for part one. Brody and myself are at six under, trying, still trying to chase down Chandler and Nate at eight under. And once again, commentary by uh, myself, Chandler Fry, and young up-and-comer Cole Radalin. And thank you again to our tournament sponsors. Discraft Discs. Infinite Discs, Oregon Disc and Wildlife in Fort George Brewery in Astoria, Oregon as well as our coverage sponsors, Gripped, Good People, Good Golf, Good Times, All Day Disc Golf. And <laughs> thank you again to Fairway Media for being out there and uh, filming the event. Yes, thank you.
Discraft Discs.